Well, hey everybody, this is Steve at Thousand Year Homes. So I've started doing some long format videos and this will be a long format video on the uh, custom weather stripping that I built here. Now I've never built my own uh, weather stripping. I've always just bought them, ready made, nailed them in place and moved forward from there. So rotate. So uh, we'll do a long form video on this. I appreciate those who just sit there and go through my long form videos, but we'll take a look at this. I have got to say that this was a markedly different experience. As soon as I've got the weather stripping in, this whole area became quiet and uh, a, a much better experience. So the transom opens out. It's, it's, it's a very lovely design and the weather stripping here, that's... <laughs> Well, and that, none of that is easy. So without further ado, let me go ahead and jump into the long form video on making custom weather stripping. Well, this homemade weather stripping is working real well for the doors. Uh, up at the top I have for a truck door, you know, the seal, it's working real good. I ordered some felt for the very bottom. Uh, and I also have a, uh, metal uh, plate that I'm going to put down on that door. That cedar is pretty soft to walk on. Eventually everything will be uh, coated with Thompson water seal so it, it can be exterior exposed. But when I take a look at doing the exact same thing here in the window, it feels a little heavy. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to rip this down so it's not as uh, aggressive and maybe uh, get out the router and put a little bit my idea is to make it look like that sort of, right? So the window trim has got a little more decorative vibe than uh, most of the primitive uh, work that's here, which I think is really, uh, it's part of the simplicity, part of the beauty, uh, you know, natural exposed. But uh, let's put a little flare around the window today. So I'm gonna get out the router and pick a bit and mill up these uh, so they look a little better. Well, let me see here. I mean, my little hand router. Let's just find one that will, will make a nice little bevel. I think that one would do that. I mean, it's not the same, but, you know, a little rounded edge. It'll be all right. Let's do that. I just want to drop down the weight of it and not have a big, thick weather strip right there. All right, let's knock a little weight off of these so that I can, I might even cut them on the edge. I found a couple that don't have a lot of knot holes uh, on the edge, so I think I can route them without much of a problem. The bottom window sill is uh, 19, so I'm gonna clamp it there at, uh, you know, so that I can put a little bevel on it. I'll clamp it at 20. And then the other side is 72, so hoping that I'll have enough room. So yeah, one side of the window should be made with uh, one of these. So if I route two of them, I'll be okay. Mm, I'll, hit, I'll hit that clamp, so I'll, I'll have to stop and go around it something over here when I get to it. Undo the clamp or something. Alrighty, let's put a little shape on this thing. That's right at 19. Move it and just route the whole darn thing.
All right. That's not too bad. I'll leave these a little rough. That's how they work in that house. Well, if that didn't lighten them enough, I'm willing to, to shave them just a smidgen right there, which I think I will. We'll see. I'll go in and put them in there. We can look together, and I can get your vote. Yeah, it's still a little heavy, isn't it? A little heavy-handed. So let me let me rip a little, little bit off and uh, make those just a little lighter, and then I'll be happy. I'm actually fine with them a little thicker here. You can see that I have some gaps there and some good sized gaps down there. Plus I want something that the window can solidly close against. So let me go ahead and set up the uh, table saw and get these ripped. Let me get a skill saw set up here. Table saw. Just want to rip this down a little bit so it's not quite so heavy on the windows. Let's do a half inch. Well, that's a quarter inch. Let me see. Yeah, that feels right. I'm going to rip a quarter inch off this.
Now I'll leave that table saw alone in case I mess up one of these pieces and I have to uh, make a third. <laughs> Hopefully not. But two should do it <laughs> if I don't make too many mistakes. Let me go ahead and set up the uh, my miter saw and we'll cut the miters for it and get these all put in there. Now I like these. They've been reduced a little bit without becoming quarter rounds or something predictable. Let me see if I can get some uh, 45s chopped in there. So I'm going to make a measurement and each one of these I'm going to cut in place, cold fit them or uh, dry fit them and away we'll go. Tops and bottoms both say 20 inch, we'll do it. So that surprises me. I always manage to make one mistake when cutting compound edges. It's just the way I work. I'm still gonna make it. There we go. 19. Alrighty, internet, let's see how good we do. Line it up a couple of times. Well, that looks good to me. Well, let's see how good we did. Break the edges here a little bit. Get the looses off. Look good to me. Well, let's see how we fit in here. Let's see how we fit. Oh my gosh, that looks really good. I am glad I took the time to bevel it a little bit. I see I have some, some work to do there. Yep. Real good. All right. Wonderful good. All righty. Oh, I got to make room for the, for the weather stripping in there. So I'll move it back a little bit. I'm glad I cut a quarter inch off of it. And I'm glad I put a little bevel on there. It's, it's, it is complimentary. It's not exactly the same thing, but it's complimentary to the trim. I'm enjoying that. All right, let's cut the rest of these and get them all in. I always do manage to make one mistake when doing trim. Always. It is mandatory. Mandatory. Well, I have no idea if that's just going to be a silhouette or not, but it is what it is. I'm pretty happy with that. Looks like it'll fit up there in the corner just fine. Looks like it matches there, okie dokie. Let's do the other ones. Well, hello boys, did you miss, you missed lunch? Did you miss lunch? Is that what you're saying, Lassie? 
You missed lunch. Where's Blaze? Where is Mr. Blaze? You know, I can't just feed one of you because then the other one comes up all freaked out. Oh, let's chime him in. We'll see if we can get Mr. Blaze here in a hurry. Feed time! Oh, yeah, 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 I see him. I see him. You're doing good. Mr. Blaze, you used to run. You used to run for feed time. Now you're just Mr. Patient. Well, that's good. There's no more food aggression. I'm slowly getting that out of you. Wonderful good. Well, let's feed you, boys. Now behind me is the good boys. They came up just like they should at 11. It's feed o'clock. They did good. I cut all those all right, too. I didn't make any mistakes. Let's see if I can do the other side with no mistakes. I noticed all my big batteries are slowly disappearing for my Ryobis. <laughs> it is a little aggravating. Exactly one person works out here. <laughs> Stuff's missing. I should start the investigation. What person? All right, let's see how we did, Internet. How about that? We'll cut. We'll count that as my mistake. See that little not a true forty-five. There's a little square part there. I don't think it'll make a difference. Let's let's uh, well let's do the other one. We'll dry fit both of these at the same time. I got faith in me. 72 is what I measured before. We got to start off by cutting uh, the uh, angle off of there. Do it this way. Yep. <laughs> Woo, just testing you. Hey, Blaze. Blaze. Come on, brother. That's hey. Come on, Hank. Back to your oats. So if you look closely, you can see that Blaze has three food buckets, and I put a little bit in each bucket. That usually slows him down just enough that Hank can finish uh, his meal before Blaze comes swooping in and takes it from him. Usually. All right, 72. That's a pretty big window, isn't it? Six foot by 20 inches. Feeling some raindrops on me. Be 
be a good day for mowing in my opinion. After I get this done, maybe I'll go into town and get a big burger. Maybe come back and mow a little bit. All right, let's not make a mistake on this last board. That way I won't have to miter and do all of that. It's, it's a lot of work to make one of these, isn't it? Is that the right angle? Tell me, Internet. Looks like it is. Let's see if we put these all in right. Then we'll get the weather stripping on and all that good stuff. Let's do a dry fit. All right, that loud noise out there is a bull crying for another bull to come and eyeball them. Their bowls are ridiculous. Oh. Let's see how I did. Let's see how I did, Internet. Did we get it? Oh, do I have a little bit I need to splice off? Maybe. Maybe just a smidgen. Maybe just a smidgen. be right back internet I have one I, you know it's always better if they're long than if they're short and it is it's long just a smidge just a smidge I might take a little off each side I'm going to take a little off each side, Internet. You know, that's so little, I, I think I can just whittle it. Let's see if I can whittle this gap. Got faith in me. do is just take a little, just a little, just a little internet, off of each side, just a little. Alright, it's like a sixteenth that I whittled off of each side. That's not half bad. 45s I'll take that all day long and rough cut timbers I'll take that all day long All looks really good except right here. That's a, a little odd because of the little bit I whittled off. It'll be okay. All right. Uh, getting hit with a little bit of rain out there. Let me get my power saws and my table saw put up and all that. I'll be right back and we'll finish this job together. All right. Very grateful for the rain in Texas. So I went and put everything up. It's not raining yet but I wouldn't put everything up. So uh, airs back to the weather stripping. It's, I don't know why it comes in six foot sections, but that's perfect here. I'll go ahead and uh, I think 
cut a 45 across here so that when I push them up into the corner, they'll be 45 into each other. And then, uh, you know, they'll just tuck in behind. Uh, and then I'll staple the whole thing. Let's see, they'll go like that. They'll go like that, uh, but behind that thing. So let's go ahead and do the tops and sides and get all that in. The weather stripping that I got at uh, Home Depot is where I got this weather stripping. So I, I'm just going to guess a 45. Might have been a little easier with a sharp razor knife or even scissors. Tin snips. All right, well, that seems reasonable to me. I'll measure out 20 inches and let's put one of these in. I'm just gonna put a nail or two in it until I'm satisfied that I've got the, the pattern. will be unne unnecessary because these are going to come together pretty well. I'll, I'll leave that one alone, but let me just cut 20 and cut them all flat. That'll be perfect. I do want to get to town. I haven't had lunch yet. The horses have, but not me. All right. How many, how many nails do I have left in here? A few. Not a lot. Zoom in, you can see my work. How about that? Be a little bit of a battle, but shouldn't be too bad. This uh, weather stripping has a little feedback to it, so uh, it definitely takes me a little bit to uh, to compress it enough where I'm satisfied. See, right now I do need to trim the 45 just so they go in there properly. All right. So I wasn't crazy the first time. I'll use the uh, back of the board as my reference point and I'll just cut along the back of the board. people cut slots right put those in the slots but this has been working for me it puts a little angle in it but it's really not noticeable so. all right one down one down four to go
Well, I'm going to put on these two pieces and see if I need to, it's possible I need to cut some of the plastic off or something like that so that they fit a little better in the corners maybe. I don't know. We'll find out. Or maybe they'll grip them. I'm not sure. Let's find out. glad I'm doing it just a half of it at a time. It's letting me get these things set up a little better than they would have been. I'm not sure why my 45s gave up. They're not 45 anymore. If anybody knows why that changed a little bit, Put it down in the comments. I'd be interested in knowing. Final sprint, the bottom and side here, and then the only thing is I have 145 that's a little off. And um, it wasn't when I did the dry fit. The dimension of the, um, maybe that's why people cut the lines in it because then it's kind of dimensionless. And uh, I don't care that it sits at a little angle. But I bet you people do care. Oh, custom weather. Like I can say doors are hard. It's not just me that thinks so. The world thinks so. Doors and chairs. They're both hard. They have a lot of pressure and just a few points of control. And a lot of angles, and a lot of things going on, doors and chairs. sure that this bottom piece is going to contact the window when I'm closed and it's flush. There's a little bit of rain out there. Let me get my... I love the rain. There's just a smidgen of uh, tools out there that would get rusty. So let me move them in come right back to you. All right, I put away the rest of my hand tools. Let's put this in, in place. There we go. Pretty happy with that. Last piece. Let's do this last piece. All day long to do weather stripping. Doors do take a long time. To be honest, this has been a week project for me, but you know, I've had other things to do. But uh, you know, a little here, a little there. Not all at once, but look how nice that looks so far. We'll do a final view, but that's looking, and it's tight as a drum. I can actually hear uh, the outside getting farther away. 
because I'm doing the uh, stripping and everything. And I didn't make any mistakes on my compound stuff. That's just amazing. There's always time. I'm not done yet. through my finger. Lots of things that could still happen. I got faith in me though. Even if I put a staple through my finger, I would get this done. Then when everybody would say, that's an interesting stain. What is that? And I'd say, oh, that's blood red cedar stain. You know, this the uh, dimension of the weather stripping. I'm going to have to cut just a little bit there, or else it won't fit. I thought maybe the bow, I could get it bowed up in there and whatnot, but it's so big that the bow will break. So let's square this up, 45, put it up in there, and uh, just call it a day. All right, I took a 16th off. Let's see if that's enough to make it decide that it wants to go in there. Yes, I am willing to declare victory. Let's put some staples in that. Dang it, I took my battery with me. Oh, man. Well, that isn't too bad for handmade weather stripping. It looks pretty good. I just have this one flaw here. I'm not quite sure how I'll fix that. Oh, everything else was tight. It really is annoying to me. <laughs> so what I need is a nice hot day where the, uh, the weather seals can be put against. Also, I need a latch that closes the door, the window rather tight enough against the weather seals that you know it gives a good solid seal and I don't think I could get away with that with a hook and latch we could try let me see I'll try it one more time 
Well, hey, Internet. So this is Steve signing off. So uh, let's see, what did I get done in this? I got done a perfectly weather stripped, uh, and I ripped these down. I'm glad I did. They look much more appropriate. They, in addition, the weather strip would have pushed it right out to the edge. It would have looked odd to the eye. So uh, perfectly done molding for a uh, sill plate to come against, the window to come against, both sill plate as well as strike plate. I'm going to do one last thing. I, since I've got an angle with that thing, I'm going to put this little eye hook here. And uh, I think that that will hold it closed. But really, uh, for this gasket to work, I need a crank that will, you know, compress it. And I need some warm days for the gasket to push against it. So, uh, you know, I'll put it out here where it's a little, little bit of a bind and with the hopes that as I... Uh, I develop energy, I'll be able to pull that closed heat and time. <laughs> we'll play in my favor. But let's get this done so that I could call this project good enough and move on to some other things, including a cheeseburger. That's ultimately what I want right now. did look nice it matches the door and uh, which has a little robot face one eye kind of looks like something Wally would build off of Wally world but uh, I like it it's cute in the middle of the night I'll see a little robot smiling back at me and uh, this is a nice touch for now it'll keep the door closed so when strong winds blow through the house it won't do anything and if I want to step outside I boop and just open this up and Give her a push. Outside I go. Oh, real nice. Real nice. And it is sitting a while up against the weather stripping as well as any store-bought window. I'll guarantee you I have had a lot of windows that in my life come from the stores that were pretty bad. So this custom build of mine, this uh, wind, uh, weather stripping, everything in here is custom, right? pretty happy with it it looks good it looks good in the video so I know that it's good and uh, it looks good in real life too uh, I ran out of nails in my nail gun so I'll have to when I go to town get some nails and finish the tightening the trim to the thing and I'm done uh, other than on the outside I've got to put the soffit on the top uh, and then a screen so bugs don't come and go and then caulk it and of course, I can't caulk in the rain. But let me, uh, when I get back, I'll start thinking about some other projects that I want to do. This is Steve, a thousand year homes. Like, subscribe, follow me along. This episode was weather stripping for a transom window. How about that?